All right. Well, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Bill, I'll ask you to take over the uh, dropping, the copying and pasting of the links there as we get started, as people continue to come in. We're thrilled to have a large group this morning. Um, Heather continues to get feedback from districts around the state and together, both the ISB team and the NIU Illinois CTE project team doing our best to work to be responsive to that feedback. And so today we, uh, we have a complete application that aligns with uh, the December webinar and uh, the course sequence information we talked about at the meeting in January. And so we hope that this is helpful in um, providing some real specific uh, direction for, for school districts to use in completing or updating your existing applications to set yourself up well uh, for the future. So with that said, um, again, if you haven't signed in, please go ahead and do so and um, take advantage of the link to the slides and you can keep those as a resource. We have tried to really build this slide deck in particular as a resource moving forward. We do have some quick announcements to get things going this morning. Bill, I think you're going to kick us off. Yeah, um, so we have a few announcements, like Jason said. The first one is the ISB Career Connected Illinois Professional Learning Calendar. Um, there are numerous different trainings and workshops in there um, that pertain to this work. So check out that link there that's in the slides. Um, and the second one is the ISB Office Hours and CCPE application process webinar information. And those, um, those links there um, down at the bottom on this page here where it's the College and Career Pathway Endorsement, those have some really great resources uh, to walk you through the process of the application. So, um, and those are all in, on the ISB website under those links. So um, check those out, um, see if those work for you, but also uh, take a look at the office hours um, coming up in the coming weeks where Heather Lucan is answering questions around um, the College and Career Pathway endorsement. And then the last one is the quick announcement. Uh, we know that um, many people are heading down to the conferences um, this week. We have the ISB Career Connections Building Community before the IACTI annual conference coming up. Um, so we're hopeful that many of you can join us there. Uh, and that's the lead into the IACTI um, conference. Awesome. We've got some other resources here on these next couple slides. These are resources that have previously been shared out. Um, these are the official Career Pathway Competencies templates. These have been out for about a year now. Um, we are going to double down actually right after this meeting to really ensure that these get posted in a clear place, at least one clear place on the ESB website. And we'll share that out via email, but all of you have access to them. These are currently living in a Google Drive, but these are, are the updated official um, um, PDFs. And in terms of updated, if you had older copies, there were some typos, things like that. Those have been cleaned up. Um, and so, so you'll find these here um, that, that should be as up-to-date as exists. The other thing that was previously shared out, but I don't think it's been shared this year, districts have asked for the career pathway word marks, the logos. Um, some districts are using them in, in course guides. They're, they want to use them for other things with students and families, with teachers and professional development. So the, the words career pathway word marks here, this is actually a link to a folder where you can access um, all of these and, and download these seven images and, and use them in your district. So these were originally created a number of years ago now um, at Southern Illinois University for statewide use. And so here you have them so that you are able to use them um, within your district. One other call out as we anticipate there's going to be um, a, quite a bit of an increase coming up here on um, emails going back and forth in the Google group. And so one thing you may want to do that we're going to encourage you to do is whether you're a school district using uh, Microsoft 365 or Google Workplace, um, go ahead and check your spam or your junk folder in your email for messages from the Career Pathway user group email account. And if there are messages in that folder uh, from that account, go ahead and mark those messages as not spam or not junk. 
with both Google and Microsoft, you should only have to do that a couple times before they start coming into your inbox consistently. But we don't want you to miss messages that you, you may not want to miss. And a reminder, don't be shy about emailing the group. Your questions, your successes, like, yes, actually brag and share something that your school or district has done really well um, so that, frankly, others can, can be inspired by it or, frankly, just copy it. Um, at share ideas that you haven't implemented that maybe you want like-minded people to help you think through. Um, please, please, please use this huge community we have statewide of people all trying to do this work. Um, we can make it both better and more efficient in that process. Heather, I want to share this or turn this over to you to share some cool data with us. Sure. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. Um, I shared this with Jason, and I think last week I showed him the map that I started to, to make. So every time that I get an application, I now add that district to the state map. So you can see how many districts have applied across the state for access, at this point, for access to that PWR platform. Um, this does not mean that this, the, all of these districts have plans built or anything of, of that nature, but it does show you representation of who has done the application and intends to issue endorsements and start to build their plans. Um, I think, um, let's see, I got two more this morning, so I think now I'm up to 162, so I apologize to the two if you sent them this morning. I haven't, you're not on the map yet, so, but that's what we're at, and then I think the next slide Yes, zooms in a little more so you can see uh, the distribution. I tried to put that cutoff there around Springfield so you can see uh, clearly where those applications are coming from. I just thought this was a nice graphic to have to kind of see how widespread we are and, and where, where they're rolling in from. Cool, that is super cool. Thanks so much, Heather. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're going to do now. We um, we, meaning I, have put together, and you'll see why, we each have a role here we're about to explain to you, have spent time doing what lots of you have done. I have, I have spent time over the course of the last week um, putting together an application uh, and making some mistakes in the process. Frankly, we're going to show you some of those mistakes, but we think at this point it's an exemplar application. It may not be perfect. It, it may not be exactly what you would do. Um, it, we know these are going to be unique to our own communities and, and the resources we have and our partners, uh, both at the post-secondary level as well as with our business and community partners. But so we want to we share this with you based on the feedback that Heather's been getting as she meets with and talks with individual districts. And so we've got some tips we're going to offer and we're going to go in there. Before we do that, this reminder, again, the vision of the College and Career Pathway Endorsements is of quality for the students who earn the endorsements. This is not about the quantity of the number of endorsements that are being earned in a school or district it, without ensuring that that quality is there. That is the most important thing. Now, even if only a smaller number of students are earning endorsements or checking all those boxes that an individual student needs to earn, what should be the outgrowth of that is it should raise the quality, relevance, and authenticity of instruction for all students. It should increase the opportunities for all students to learn uh, and become proficient with the essential skills. And frankly, it should dovetail very, very nicely with the work that we are either all doing or all will be increasingly doing around uh, career preparation, post-secondary preparation. This should all line up well. And certainly that was the intention of the Post-Secondary Workforce Readiness Act. So with that said, I'm going to do a lot of the talking here. I apologize for that. I know everybody's you know, would rather not hear me do that. But in this case, I'm going to talk through, here's what I did as you, the district level administrator, if that's what you are, the school level administrator, but who entered the application into the PWR portal. So we're going to go into, Heather has created a sample district. We'll be showing you that in just a moment here. Bill is going to represent all of you. We hope all of you join Bill in being Bill. I know that's weird, but... Um, He's going to jump in with questions, and we want you to also jump in with questions or comments, like, why'd you do it that way? This is what I'm thinking. Um, and if we can't get, we're going to keep this moving so we can get through the full application process. So if we don't get to all those, put them in the chat, because those can become a resource for what other support materials get built. And then Heather is going to be Heather. 
Um, Heather's going to be appearing here as, her, as herself, and she's going to be talking about, well, this is this is what the agency is is going. This is what we're looking for, and this is why we're looking for it. And here's a here's a way you could do this. And so, with that said, I'm going to um, escape out of the slide deck. And while it's not the prettiest, um, I'm going to leave the slide deck like this at the moment. So first, a couple of notes on the portal itself. Um, I'm about to go in and show you our sample school district. Lincoln Community Unit School District 1818. I think it's the only district in the state with a four digit number. And so we have uh, five plans we've put in there, but as, as you'll see, none of them are currently approved um, in the, they all have draft status and only one of them has six out of six items checked. And that's, that's the one we're gonna look at. This is also a weird school district because over the next few weeks, you will find that this school district will end up having partner institutions all over the state of Illinois. Um, for most of you, uh, but not all of you. I mean, there's examples of school districts that will have multiple partner institutions included, but many school districts, probably most school districts will have a, a single post-secondary partner, often a community college, though that won't always be the case. So with that said, um, I'm going to go into the system tab and I'm going to make this bigger here. Hopefully everybody can see that now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and click here to go in. And again, how did I get here? How did I create these? Frankly, we followed the directions in the guidebook that's on the, we have the guidebook linked in here. I'll get to that in a moment. That is linked in your slide, slide deck. That is also on the left side of the ISBE Career Pathway, College and Career Pathway Endorsements webpage. Um, on the left navigation side, there's just three links over there and the guidebook is the PDF link. There's a spreadsheet, a PDF, and the video Heather made the screencast to go along with the guidebook. So if this is your first time in the PWR portal, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna look at those. And so click in, go into the plan. Um, so this is our engineering plan. Um, it's got draft approval right now, and it is in the path, career pathway of manufacturing, engineering, technology, and trades. So then, first thing we did is the labor market information. And remember, it, so everything I've done here, it relates to, goes back to kind of the December ISB webinar that took the place of our December career pathway user group meeting. Um, and so modeling this application after the new expectations that will be fully in place when rules are approved and we're in IWAS, et cetera. But if I, if I do that here, uh, especially if I'm just starting out, it means a very smooth transition. Uh, it means no transition instructionally. It means I'm aligned and I'm ready to go and a, a smooth transition on the back end. So what does my um, workforce outlook look like? Well, I found this, like, what do we need engineers? Yeah, we need engineers here. I have this data here. Um, and um, I, in this case, I went to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But the truth is the new rules, um, you may not even need to do that. You may have a local advisory council that is telling you, you need this. And in that case, you would, you would write this. So I typed this in. Uh, down here at the bottom, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, there will continue to be a significant need for engineers, particularly mechanical, industrial, and electrical engineers, all of which are central to the focus of this college and career pathway endorsement. If you walked into the classrooms of the courses in the course sequence, really the skills that students are learning are aligned with those three engineers. This is not bioengineering that they're doing in these course in this course sequence. So. Um, additionally, the workforce outlook identifies a national average starting salary of approximately $91,000 for the decade ending in 2026. So not only is there a workforce needed for engineers, but it offers a significant wage to new employees in the field. I, I wrote that. That's what I wrote. That's the explanation for why, why we're doing this as a school district and what our workforce need is. Again, you don't have to go out and find statistics that support this. You may have uh, a newspaper article from your local newspaper, you may have an advisory council. Heather, anything you want to add there? Nope, that looks good. 
Um, you've got the the plan. Yep, we're going to talk about the plan. They're coming up as well. Um, there is an option for this. I know that uh, Jason had put that in there um, for the with the workforce information. So the quest there is a specific question that will show up in the new platform that you need to address. Um, you can definitely put that in to the description. You can also link that. Um, if you type that up in a Word document, for example, you can actually use that instead for this component. Um, so either way, he's kind of got the best of both on there <laughs> with the link to that. But in the, the new platform, um, it will just be a text box that you would have to answer that question. So, so in the new platform, what I typed here is all I would do is copy and paste this into the new platform. Correct. That's, correct. that's it. So yep. that's, that's what this answer is looking like. Um, and and that is that is a, a frankly a a more I think school district friendly approach as we move forward. So um, for the individual plan, so in the guidebook that's it's on the ISB uh, career, College and Career Pathway Endorsements page, there are a bunch of questions listed in orange. And so what I did is I took those questions and I put them into a Word document. And so I'm actually going to open that Word document right now. I should have had this pre-opened. I apologize. Um, so this is coming up right now. And so um, that's awesome. Thank you, Larry. Um, Bill will jump in at some point here and give you a quick response there. Um, so here in this Word document, let me make this bigger to make it easier to see. I took each of the questions and I listed the questions out. I just copied and pasted them in first. And then I put a bullet underneath them just to make it easier for me to read. And I answered each question with what our school, you know, Lincoln High School and Lincoln CUSD 1818, um, what we were, what our plan is. So the general, how are students supported with comprehensive post-secondary and career planning? And, and I want you all to know, I'm going to tell you in a second, you can access this whole plan. You, all of you have access. This is, so while the PWR platform, there are buttons that unfortunately never were fully developed. It's only on version 0.0.3. And if you know something about software, you know, you usually don't see anything less than version one. Um, so this is, it, it, was, it was never fully finished that this is one of the really cool features that was in the PWR platform, which is these are publicly accessible. So in the slide deck, we'll come back to it in just a moment after this section. Um, you have a link to access this whole plan. And so you can you can read this in detail if you want and say, how does this compare to what we're doing in our district with these things? So then what we have is we have these next sets of questions are kind of paired questions. First around career goals, then around post-secondary plans, and then around financial aid and literacy. And if you read this whole thing, you will see there is a lot of overlap from section to section. Now, it is not an exact copy and paste. There are differences in different sections of who is doing what, but there is a lot of overlap. The other thing that is true is as I worked on this, if you're a school district working on your first career pathway endorsement application, You'll notice I titled this one Individual Plan, MET, Engineering. This would be, this is the same individual plan I am going to use in all of the other career pathway endorsements. This is how we are doing these things for all of our students in the school, regardless of if they're approaching a specific endorsement or which specific endorsement they're pursuing. And so, so this, this was a fair amount of work. I'm not going to lie. Spent time Sunday morning last weekend working this through. Um, I feel good about this. I feel like this is a, a reasonably accessible plan for many high schools. Like I'm not claiming that we're meeting with one group of students with a counselor every week. That's like probably unrealistic um, given how, how we're staffed with counselors and what other things counselors need to do. But this, this is our plan for this district. Your plan may look different. It may look similar. Whatever, it's for us, it's going to be the same plan across all pathways. So again, in terms of the application process, it feels like a lot on application one. It's not going to feel like so much on application two. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to fix the title and upload it. Um, Heather, any comments about that? 
Um, no, it's the same premise kind of when we were talking about the workforce, just that uh, in the current platform, um, it's not a requirement. We haven't had, and there's, there's not been an opportunity for you to reflect on the individual plan, which is the required component for the students. Um, so best practice would be to get that, that written now, if possible, and have it attached to your current plan. So when we make that transition, you have that answer that will be prompted for, for those different plans in the new platform. So a couple of tips here from the individual plan, just to reiterate. The questions, where those questions came come from, it came from, the, they're written in orange text in the uh, platform guidebook, the PWR platform guidebook. You can answer them in a separate document like Google Docs or Microsoft Word, or if you're using Apple's pages, um, there will likely be some overlap between answers as well as potentially some specific different uh, di specific differences between answers. And then you just upload that document um, to represent your individual plan in the current platform. And again, in IWAS, these will be text fields. So like when this moves to IWAS, I'll just go back to my Google Doc or my Word document and copy and paste and I'm all set. Maybe make some updates if we've made some changes to what we're doing. One other thing I want to note is when you finish a section, you'll get a green check mark here in the lower right corner of that section. And that's great. You, you can't move on if you don't have a green check mark. But just because you have a green check mark doesn't mean you've actually met all of the requirements because the content also matters. And that's this is an important call out in this slide. So the content will then be reviewed by ISBE once you've submitted that and communicated that your submission is ready. Um, because for example, once you've submitted, it can't be unsubmitted and resubmitted. There's like some features like that that aren't in the system. And so we'll get to that at the end here. Heather has, has a very, very simple form. Don't be, don't be anxious about this, a little Microsoft form that's a very quick fill out, probably less than 90 seconds to let her know, we have updated this, the content answers all the kinds of questions we're supposed to now, we're ready for you to, to go in and read ours. Because um, otherwise Heather is just frankly having to keep looking at all these all the time. She can't tell if you've updated it. There's no way for, for her to see that. And obviously with 162 or maybe now 164 districts across the state who have applications in process, um, that, that's where the other form comes in to help her be efficient with that time and then to be able to spend more time answering your questions. So back here in the system, we get into this pathways box. And again, if you've already been in the system before, successfully submitted endorsements, you know there is a lot hidden in this one section. Like this box above, this takes like two seconds. This is not a big deal. I just look for the, the occupations, it's easy. This box, I'm gonna click edit here and you're gonna see there is a lot more coming up here. So, um, so first of all, if you're a multi high school district, I, I keep seeing Gina is right below Heather on my, my, uh, my Brady Bunch diagram. She's got two high schools in her district. So she would, you know, if she's doing the same pathways at both high school, she's going to want that checked. If, if not, if something different's happening at Central than at North, then she's going to uncheck that. And, and she could even, she could even label it engineering dash GCHS or GNHS, I suppose. Um, and so, but but that that's an important checkbox if you have multiple high schools in your district. Um, I think even in most of the districts that I've worked with that have multiple high schools, the pathways the same are the same at each school, and so they're checking yes. But that may not be the case for you. So then, this is where we add our our regional post secondary program. Now, there's one call out I want to make here again. As we saw on the maps, we have people all over the state that are already in the system. So you, you need to see here, look at, there are all of these institutions in here already. And so what you wanna do first, like right there, perfect example, we can see on the same screen, we've got two College of DuPages, one with a lowercase p and one with an uppercase p. And we've got two McHenry County Colleges, both with uppercase h's, I'll, I'll point out. Um, 
you, you don't want to just click add institution if your institution is here. Now, I'm actually going to go to um, College of Lake County because, and so there's two College of Lake Counties here. Um, and, oh, I can't, I'll show you on here. All right, no, I won't show it to you on there. So you can see how adept I'm not still at the system. You yeah. want to... You Nathan. want to select the existing one. Go ahead, Heather. Save me from myself. <laughs> hold on, hold on. X out of that. X out of that. Out of the post-secondary program. Yeah. So before you even start, go up to the top of the page, please, and click on organizations. No, I'm sorry. System resources. My bad. That's yeah, right. I got the institutions. institutions. Now, now search for the one that you were. If you go to the filter at the top. So you, yep, I was just gonna scroll down, but you can click because this I wanna, plus button. I wanna, show, yep. I wanna show something on this one, sure. Okay, so you notice that College of Lake County is there. If, if they were not, if your, if your institution was not there, you would have to add them. But you also need to check which programs they have yep. listed. So you could have um, a school, for example, you know, a college that's listed there, but no programs associated, or the programs associated with it is not complete. Um, so you need to you need to make sure um, that you have the programs there, um, so that you can um, then also identify the credentials. So that that's just something to to point out. So, but where Jason was you will start allow with you to add that as well. You can do it either way. I think in the guidebook, my recommendation is to do this part first, as far as um, the, the system resources with the institution, but either way. So, so Heather and Jason, um, Amber brings up a good question, uh, and I was thinking the same as well, as who are, are the participants that are doing the plan, are they adding a new yes. uh, college then? Yeah, yeah. So, Jason, do you want to make up one? <laughs> um, I mean, we could, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, don't know can, what's in there. Show, so. Well, we can just come up with a, so let's find, so let's, so, let's just add a program. Okay, so, it's so, safe so to say how go to like Rock Valley. Program. Yeah, I see that, Amber, so, so go back to institutions, so let's search for uh, Rock, Rock, Rock Valley. Valley. Yep. Okay, click on the institution name. And then scroll down to the bottom. There you go. So you would add new program. And it would need to be would, uh, the, the actual name of that program that is at Rock Valley. So, so it'd be the OSF uh, St. Anthony. Um, yeah. So it's safe to say, as as Jason kind of uh, touched on this, is do not rely on the current descriptions. You need to look through them and uh, essentially, you know, either pick the one that matches to yours or create a new one. This is one of those things that's really hard to do in front of other people, by the way. And I'm being recorded. So I'm going to let this go now. We're going to come back to this because this is a website <laughs> we're going to be coming back to with the EFE directors. Um, Actually, Jason and, and can I jump in real quick? This is Gina. Please go um, ahead, Gina. I think we need to be careful on this because I know like after the December um, webinar, I went in and updated this information, but people were not so, checking the system and we're mm -hmm. updating. So there were several of the same schools that were there. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So I just want to reiterate, like really go to the system before you add something because the same school is in there like five times. So that, that's where I was going. Gina's exactly right. And that's where I was going at the very beginning when I was calling out the multiple schools, the two colleges of DuPage, the two McHenry County colleges. That's, that's where we want it. And Heather's directions will help us all collectively avoid what Gina just talked about by, because it takes you first to the organization, to the institutions. And, and so, so yes, Gina just perfectly called out why Heather wrote the directions like she did. So you do want to go into those system resources first. And that's also the kind of thing, um, I mean, I have big ideas knowing about how this data flows between the agencies about where I'd like this to be at in the future on the IWAS side. Um, this is one of those challenges 
that frankly is is on the implementation side and is right at the heart of the PWR Act. I mean, the PWR Act is designed to bring these things together um, so that it becomes more of a single system from which certainly all of us that are part of this call can benefit from. But yeah, we're in the, the process of trying to make that happen. So that is exactly why I did uh, start the direction I started with the institution. So here though, you can see this is an engineering one. It aligns with their mechanical engineering program, um, associate in applied science, they're a partner. One of the other quick call outs is for these gateway courses, and this is in, Heather, in the guidebook on the ISB website, you can just mark those as, as not applicable now. So then we get into some of the meat of this here. And so here are the pathway courses. Um, now, I, I should have ISB codes for these, um, but I didn't. And I, I didn't bother one or two of you who I, I know at least one of you are on the call to have you tell me which, which uh, ISB codes your, your actual courses were aligned with. Um, and but so these these should all be in there, but otherwise you can you can see the rest of the information is in here. Um, now one of the things, so I'm going to call it a couple of things here. So first of all, um, typical grade you have to select one. So and I know for a lot of these you you may want to select two grades, for example. Like you, you're going to pick one. Which which grade is this typical? Um, you are answering these. Um, you. you pretty self-explanatory. Um, the number of semesters, that is, even if you're using a competency-based model, you're gonna make an estimation as to what it's equivalent to. Um, that's written in other places that we've discussed before, uh, that idea of the equivalency. And so here, I'm gonna bop back into the slides. So what I originally did, whoops, here. Um, so the, the course descriptions is, First, these are some questions I thought of in doing this work. So I had, I had Bill's hat on earlier in this process. So question number one is, does your school have course descriptions written and published for each course? Um, I have been on, in the last two weeks, I have been on probably 50 or 60 different school district websites around the state. And some have course descriptions on them, some don't. That's just something you need to know. Do you have those in one place? Are they updated regularly? Um, depending on your role, you may absolutely know that. You may know that about some areas, but not other areas. That, that's kind of a starting place before you even do this. And then um, these questions, which will lead to the two actual questions that ISBE wants us to answer. Do the course descriptions articulate the key concepts, content, and skills covered in the course? And then do they explain how the course contributes to students' career exploration and development? Now, if, if the answers to these are no, I am not saying you need to you know, run around now and say, oh my gosh, we have to go rewrite all of our course descriptions. I mean, that may be a nice idea, but like, let's be realistic here about what can be done and can't be done and what the benefits are. So I would say start with the courses that are gonna be part of your course sequence. So what I did originally is this, the school district that I was modeling much of this after, they do have all their course descriptions posted and they recently updated those course descriptions. So I was like, oh, this is great. Look at this, there's so much here. I copied this, I pasted it, I dropped it right here into the system. And then at the beginning of the week, I said, Heather, go check that out. And Heather said, you didn't answer the questions, Jason. And I said, oh yeah, you're right. I didn't okay, answer I want to clarify, questions. I said it very nicely. She did say it very nicely, but <laughs> But, and I was like, yeah, right, I absolutely, and, and I get it, it's just like all of you, I was trying to move through this to get on to the next thing on my to-do list. And so, so I came back and I put the questions in and I answered them. And this is mostly a copy and paste. So in the box on the right, I'm telling you, if you were to compare slide 22 and slide 23 side by side, all I did was, the first part of that description answered question one already. The second part answered question two. And then I added two sentences to the end of question two that I knew, I, that I know are real, knowing what's happening in there. It, it really didn't take me very long. To do, I mean, it didn't, took me just a few minutes to do that. Um, now, again, I was starting with, from this district, a pretty good description to begin with, a very good description to begin with. 
So here, this is actually what I had in there for Heather to look at at the beginning of the week. And you can see, you notice down here, please note the fee for this course, which includes credit from the College of Lake County is $50 for yada, yada, yada. Well, so then, you know, I had to go fix these for all these classes. So here again, I put the questions in, I reorganize. Now here in question one, I did add a couple of sentences, one that listed which essential skills are covered in this course and one that listed which comp technical competencies are covered in this course. And then I ended up removing the statement at the bottom about the CLC stuff, which is good. That's important for kids and parents to know where it was posted, but it's not important for ISB to know here. Could I have left it in? Yeah, I don't think Heather, I mean, Heather, would that have been a problem if I had left that statement in at the bottom? No, Heather says no. No, no, it wouldn't have been. Okay. So but there it's, you have it's it. Not, it's not needed. I mean, that's, uh, you know, it's extra. It could be a good extra, though, if you want that in there. <laughs> Bill, Jason, did you bring, go ahead. Just, just a clarification. So, like, you know, in reviewing some of uh, the course descriptions that I've seen in the past, it's not just a simple copy and paste over into this document, as you really have to address those questions. And like you mentioned, touch on some of those skills that the kids are walking away with. Yeah, I mean, it's going to depend on where your district's course descriptions are at. I, so you're exactly right, Bill. I mean, this was, I, I, this was, these were pretty good, relatively new, very new, recently rewritten course descriptions with a real strong focus on what was happening with the curriculum and instructionally in these classrooms. So this was a pretty easy starting point. Again, there's plenty of districts of the 60 districts, there was probably 20 where I couldn't find any kind of course descriptions at all. And that doesn't mean they don't exist. It just, it may be my use of the web. It may be, maybe they're not on the web, which might be fine. So, um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You've got to answer these two questions. And so again, you're only, for right now, you're only having to answer these, not for all courses offered in your school district, for the, I, I think these are good questions at the high school level in particular, but um, but just for the courses in the course sequence where students are going to take those courses as part of earning a career pathway endorsement too. So don't don't make this a bigger task than it needs to be either. So back here to the system, I'm going to save that. So I I did go through. I had to edit all four of these courses had to be fixed. And so I, I went back and fixed those. Now, true, true fact here, this school district actually has two alternative courses you could take here at near the beginning, uh, two robotics classes. And I didn't add those. I probably should have. If you're really going to have real kids taking those, you would have to add those. Um, or you could rewrite this, copy this, you know, redo this whole thing and have a second pathway that includes those. Um, but here, I was just trying to get you all what you needed as, as quickly as possible. Um, that's a great question, uh, Patty. I'm gonna defer to Heather on that question. Um, we, yeah, I can work on in the new platform potentially having that uh, populate the description. And the description, I believe, would still be necessary. I'll have to look into that, Patty. That is a good question. I will I will find, find that out to see. I'm going to piggyback off Patty's question and say, for transitional math, if that's possible for the CTE courses, that may be possible here for transitional math. A don't know if that would work equally as well for transitional English. Um, maybe, Agreed. maybe, but I'm less confident in it than I am in the three traditional, excuse me, transitional math options that we have in the state. And so, um, so here, this was quantitative literacy stats, and this was I wrote this. Um, you know, I'm sure there are many people on this call who, frankly, could write a better course description for quantitative literacy and stats than, than I wrote here. Um, but I thought this was serviceable. Um, and so um, two semesters, you know, I've got my stuff in there. 
and I saved save that. Jason, so can I, can I interject with something yep. there? So um, keep in mind that for completion of the PWR platform, you have to have that green check mark. So you have to have information in here. However, when we move to the iWIS based platform, this will not be something that you report on at all. So I wouldn't get hung up in this area on the course description. It's required. So again, you could copy and paste from, from our course catalog. Um, you know, you have to fill in that description in order to save it. Um, but this component within the platform now, uh, as long as you list at least one, um, it will give you that green check mark. And, and remember, that's also because of the shift that academic readiness is, is really a student level function. We Correct. talked about that in December. Heather talked about that at length in December. So down here, um, we've got uh, team-based challenge, well, career exploration experiences, team-based challenges, and career development activities. And um, uh, again, these, these should all be available. So I'm gonna, here we have our engineering ma manufacturing meetup. It's like an in-school field trip day uh, that a, a variety of people from the community come in. It's like a, a mini conference for students. They get a keynote address, they get to interact with these ind industry professionals through breakout sessions. It's not just a career fair, that's for sure. And so I think that's that's one of the things I've heard Heather say, um, following the meetup, students engage in in-class in reflection over multiple days, sharing some activities where they're thinking about their future. So it's it's not entirely a standalone activity either, but there you go, that's that's an example. I'm gonna call out the team-based challenges in a little bit more detail. So um, I wanna show you here, again, this was in the slide deck. Um, so this was the original text of the team-based challenge that this real district submitted. And it, this, is, this was outstanding when, when the NIU and ISB teams got together this past fall and were reviewing elements data that was coming out of the system, kind of looking for exemplars. Um, these these team-based challenges stood out, um, but even with this being a very, very good team-based challenge, uh, very, very good, the description was still actually missing a couple of key components. And so here, updated the description to meet that. And so um, all of this is exactly what was already in there. Then I added, and this is in the first bullet, this sentence, to describe the role of the professional expert uh, mentor uh, in, in working with the students. So that is obviously a critical component of a team-based challenge, uh, really, really important component. And so added that sentence, and then which technical competencies uh, and essential skills are covered. There was one technical competency covered and three essential skills covered. I, I added those. Um, and, and you'll see here um, in the, if you go through both of the team-based challenges, like that became kind of my format for doing this. Like that's what worked just for Jason to be able to know I had covered this. You, you don't have to follow that format. I think it's probably got some instructional benefits, different teacher next year teaches it. They can look at this right away and know, oh, this is the focus of the assessment from kind of a backwards design model. And then again, this is nothing new here. This is one you've seen multiple times. This was in the December webinar. These are just the components of the team-based challenge, just so you have it somewhere handy where if you're working with some teachers or you're helping write uh, the description of what the team-based challenge is, that it, it covers these things. And um, the one that, that maybe I kind of glossed over is actually this one. And yes, they were working in teams. So they were working in collaborative groups. So um, there's that. So uh, finishing up here in the system. Um, so I, I put in all these professional learning experiences. I'll, I'll show you. you. You may have multiple internships, depending on how many organizations you're working with. How did, um, oh, I don't know why they didn't show up because they're in the system. Let's see here. That's weird. Let's that's, been, that. that's been a glitch that a lot of, oh. of Districts have run into that the, the um, employer is not sticking when they when they hit 
saved, even when they save it. So it may be something that you have to put in the description. If you okay, that. I've got it. I've got it in the description too. Yeah. I'm going to resave it. This is exact. So how did I get the employer in here before? Um, this, I, just like we looked at when Gina had brought up the comment and talking about the institutions, I, I went in at the beginning. I pre-populated any of my business partners that we were working with for the team-based challenges, for the internships. And so that's how I got it in here. Um, one thing I will say, if you know that there are multiple school districts in your area that are already in the platform, and you know that multiple of you are working with the same partner, look first in the system resources before you start under employers and see if they're already in there. Again, right now in this current system, we're counting on each other to keep this clean and neat. And so, so check that first before you go and add the employer. Um, you know, if there's uh, a bunch of DuPage, no, that doesn't work anymore. They're in Chicago. I was going to use McDonald's as an example. So whatever. If you're all working with the same partner, check and see if the partner's in here. And then if not, that person can be the first one to put the partner in. So, all right. Um, so that, I think I've got everything in here. And you all should be able to see it all in the in the link that we offered earlier. Heather, what do I do now? <laughs> um, okay, if you could go back to, yep. Um, you, you've reviewed, click Save Pathway. Mm -hmm. And I know that when you get into the pathway, it actually takes you to another screen. So you need to um, hit Cancel. Okay. So go to your engineering. You notice that it's still in draft mode. And there's one more step um, under organizations where it says approve item. Yep, that would mean that everyone's in agreement. And now that will trigger the submit plan to ISD at the top of that page. Not the top, I'm sorry, oh, underneath right Yeah, I'm pointing to the screen like you can see where I'm pointing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now on my end, because I'm in the portal for my end, I will look it up. And you know, technically, Jason, I wouldn't necessarily approve it because you don't have the ISB course codes, but I'll be nice. because you. <laughs> so on my end, it shows submitted. I'm going to go in and approve it. And Jason, if you go back, you should see that it's been approved. If you refresh, I believe. Yep. There you go. Now it's approved. So this is also the point, though, where when I finish that district approval, I would come to this form, which we have on slide, I think it's 30. Yep, at the top. And, yeah. and we will also send it out. And I would fill out this quick form, Lincoln's, I'm sorry, this is small. I should make this bigger. Lincoln, CUSB 1818, typo, uh, I am the CP, CCPE contact. Uh, we are not issuing them for this school year. This is, we've got some sophomores, maybe a couple of juniors who will get these in 24 or 25. This is very important. So like I talked to an administrator last night on the phone, they've got two students that are seniors that they're gonna have for health sciences and technology. She definitely wants to click yes here because she wants to make that a priority for Heather to review hers and, and get those done. So those seniors can go. Me, I can be like, nope, we're good. We're gonna keep plugging along here with the work we're doing. Heather, I know you need to get to those districts that are, are submitting right now for seniors, current seniors. Um, and I did not, so there we go. Um, but if I did, then I would put engineering because maybe I have five programs in there, but there's only one, like that district will have two in the platform, but they're only gonna have one with seniors graduating this year. And that's health sciences and technology. So if I was that district, I would put health sciences and technology. And the name of the actual career pathway. Yep. yep, just like mm -hmm. that. And I would have this marked yes, and then click submit. Yep, so there's a couple questions that are coming up in the chat. 
um, if if you currently have a plan that has that is proved, uh, you still need my confirmation that you have reviewed it and you are ready to issue for this year. It's going to be the completion of this form. So if you go in and you update, if you're already in an approved status and you go in and update in the platform, it doesn't. I don't get any kind of notification saying that you've done that. So I am re-reviewing everyone once I get the 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 uh, confirmation on the form. That was the best way I could come up with to be able to, <laughs> to to work within the system. I did not want to go back in to everybody's plan that had been approved and reject it. Um, I didn't think that would be beneficial to anybody because then you would have to go back in and resubmit it. So this form is basically your resubmission. So um, and and then just as this slide shows, um, you two things will happen. I'll I'll review it. I have a, a document that I'm going to use um, for feedback. If it's rejected in the platform, I'll still I'll send you an email with the attached document, which will outline exactly what you need to change or where my concerns are with what's been um, submitted. If it's approved, you'll get the and you're going to issue endorsements for this year. You will get the the official letter via email. It will go to um, whoever the point of contact is for the the uh, CCPs as well as the superintendent. Uh, whoever's listed basically on the application, and you'll get that official letter uh, as well as the new seals for those endorsement areas. If you have checked no, we don't plan to issue, but your plan's approved, you'll get that letter saying that you've been approved. You just won't have the seals to be able to attach to your um, transcripts. So, Heather, a few other questions. How long do you expect the approval? to take, um, and then another one is if they submitted in November, do they still have to move forward with that uh, form? Yes, the form is 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 basically your confirmation that you understand what the new updates, the different component requirements are based on, on the rules um, and that you're ready for me to, to take a look at those. Um, I am working as diligently as possible to get them approved. Um, my entire afternoon today is blocked off to get that done. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful that for those who have completed the form, you will hear something from me within the next week on, on the status of those. Can I, can I jump in, Heather, and, and take a first stab at Janice's question? Um, sure, yeah. Given, given, that. given that I don't work at ISB, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of lay this out there in, in my terms and then let Heather um, add to it or, or change it. And so um, I, I have said this in a number of settings, a number of people have heard me say this, and I just want to establish that, you know, in, a, in, in hindsight or in a perfect world or in whichever of those kind of phrases we want to use, um, having the rules done before August of 2019 would have been ideal. Um, having a system up and running with no data in it before the agency was approving it, and then the agency being able to approve it would have been ideal. And so the the some of the the details about what was in the system already and the handoff to the agency, and there were probably some things that in, in retrospect could have been done differently, but now that the rules are being developed and there are these guidelines that are in progress and the movement to the IWAS system, this is the cleanup period. So for the early adopters, unfortunately, there is a little bit of pain here of needing to um, needing to uh, to go from there. And thank you, Bridget. I will get the correct evaluation form. So thank you. Yep. And Amy, thank you both. So. Heather, I don't know if you want to add to that or. No, no, that, that is correct. Uh, and if one of my teammates gets to the evaluation form before I do, please feel free to throw it in the chat. The struggle is real at the moment. There we are. Um, 
So as I drop the evaluation in the chat, I do want to call it, you do have a link to uh, other upcoming professional learning opportunities. Our team will be at the uh, both the Career Connections Conference and then the IACT Conference with presentations happening um, all of the days. And, and let me come back to that question about the plans. Um, the the um, We are also next week on Wednesday, we will be releasing the summer 2023 professional learning calendar. And we will be releasing the next year professional learning calendar in the next few weeks thereafter. Um, one call out I will make to people who are here, there will be, we are planning a set of team-based challenge writing workshops um, around the state. We will be contacting some of our EFE directors to help us find spaces in school districts to run those. We have target locations partially based on the map data that Heather showed you today. Um, and so those will be in-person half-day workshops. Uh, we have about half a dozen planned for this summer around the state that we'd like to have large turnouts of teachers to come in those days. And, and it, frankly, for CTE teachers, so many of our CTE teachers are, are doing activities that check all or nearly all of the team-based challenge boxes that it's not a huge lift. When we get courses and the course sequences that are coming from other uh, parts of life in our schools, sometimes that, that's a bigger lift because class might look different in those settings uh, traditionally. And so anyhow, that's something to look forward to when you see that calendar, which again, we'll start sharing out next week. Um, and yes, there will be admin academies being, being offered. Um, um, and uh, Nancy, I'm going to let Heather answer the question about timeline on rules. I think you know some of that is out of the. There are other people that are involved in in those processes, so I'm not sure there is an exact timeline yet. Um, but I I've told a couple people recently spring is what I'm hoping, and so I don't know. It's certainly going to knock on wood here. Feel like spring and normal next Wednesday, but I don't think it'll be it'll be that day. So Heather, I don't know if you have an answer to Nancy's question. No, that that projection seems seems about right. So there are multiple steps that it needs to go through before it's, it's out there. So um, so Jennifer, the the what if our plan does not get approved? Will you let us know what to fix? So yep, Heather has actually developed uh, a new form, like a feedback form um, to give direct feedback. So if you if you get rejected, She's going to have that out just like I would as a teacher with a rubric while I'm assessing student stuff to be like, oh, this is what I'm seeing that needs some work. There you go. And to try and allow you to be targeted and efficient. Um, and then you would update that in the system and then resubmit the Microsoft form that is on slide 30 to say, yep, we've updated it. And then when Heather sees that, she'll go back in and, and then she can be very specific about looking just for those updates. Um, um, Tracy's question is a great question. Um, yeah. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna first lower the bar. Tracy knows I have an educational technology background. I think Tracy knows that. Um, I I am assuming it will not transfer, but I know the agency has goals in this space. So I just want to personally set the bar on this one to, to, I think if I were in your shoes and I've been in those shoes, I'm gonna assume that it won't transfer and I'll be copying and pasting. Um, but Heather, what's your answer to that question? Oh, hold on. Okay, sorry, I was trying to, <laughs> I was responding to Terry. Um, okay, yeah, so I am working with the, with the um, IWAS team. I, I meet with them. Well, now we're, we're upping the, the, the time that I meet with them at least two hours a week. Um, to roll this over. So my goal from the start has been as much of the information that you have in the current system will be transferred over. Worst case scenario, <laughs> I'll pull that out there and be just be transparent, would be there, there may be some copying and pasting that has to be done. Um, but we're hoping that we can get um, as much of the information over, which is why I have um, found 
places within the current PWR platform for you to input information about the individual plan and so forth. So if you have that now, then, then hopefully you won't have to go through answering that question again. You'll already have that answer and can transfer that. So that's our goal for that. And as, as a timeline, yeah, I, I can't tell you on that one. So I'm hoping Chris, spring would be fantastic. I mean, that's. I mean, I'm sorry. Fall of next year would be great, but I am not going to hold my breath on that. So Chris, one thing I had mentioned a little bit earlier about the school district that has two plans. Uh, human and Public Services and Health Sciences and Technology, and they've got two seniors that they, they're going to be able to earn the Health Sciences and Technology. They're on track to earn that endorsement this year. My advice to that district offline was, well, put that one in the PWR portal and be answering all the questions for the other one in a Google Doc right now and just sit tight. Like, if you know, if, if you don't need it right now, let's see next fall and you can then apply for your human and public services one, hopefully in IWAS at that point. And frankly, that's probably a benefit to that district to not do something where they may have to redo some of it. And I would actually make the argument, it's a benefit to Heather to not have one in there that's, that's maybe not a priority at the moment. And then it's a benefit to all the other districts because Heather isn't looking at that one when that's not a priority for right now too. So that was kind of my thinking, but really for them, for the the person I was talking to, it was like, well, you won't have to redo stuff. And if, if come October, we're still using the PWR portal system, then then I'd be like, okay, well, enter it now. So you can you can get your next year seniors, your class 24 done. Well, I just want to say it's there's such awesome stuff going on. Oh, thank you for re-putting that question in. Thank you. I forgot to call that one out again. Um, is there a way, Heather, how can how can plans from other districts be viewed in the current system? I, there isn't a way that that I know of to do that because the only plans you have access to are those that are that you have that you can see by within your organization. Um, there is the public view that's available, so it would be um, whether or not they had that linked on their website or if you contacted that district directly to ask if you could see those plans. Um, part of so, the intent for today was to develop those plans that we that we have here so that we can get some examples um, up. So it may be that we begin to reach out to some of the districts to see if they'd be willing to share that um, or portions of it. And then we could begin creating plans for for all of these. So yeah, I think I think that question gives me some ideas for our user group. And the balancing act right now is actually wanting to make sure that plans that are out there kind of meet all the requirements yeah. so people aren't, you know, looking at plans. But if you currently are a district that has approved plans that you you are really confident are, are doing this, even though we need to resubmit those, it is this link over here. I think I'm sharing my screen correctly. Yeah, right you now. are. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> um, I don't see my border, but it is this link on the right side under public view. So like none of these other ones have stuff in them at the moment, but that's the link I shared with everybody. So I literally just click on that and then highlight and copy. And so, so that is something I can share out in that. That's, I think this is this is great timing for this conversation because obviously we're going to have a lot of interactions with a lot of you uh, over the next week. And so this is something we can be talking about hopefully within the next two weeks, be sharing more. The other thing in terms of us, I, I have to be realistic, we're not going to have a lot of these filled out in the next week. Um, things are, are busy uh, for us this week as they are for all of you, but then Coming off the, the conference and the IACD conference, these will become a priority for our team to, to help the ISBE team in, in getting these filled out and possibly some other ones. Absolutely. Well. Yep, that has been my goal all along. So, yep, that's, that's what we plan to do. Uh, there's a question from Susie there. Nope, you do not need to submit again.
Well, again, just want to thank all of you for joining us today. I mean, if you want to stay on and ask questions, please feel free to do so. Um, Bill and Heather and myself made sure we had some extra time blocked out in our calendar. Um, but we will also be sharing out the recording um, over the weekend or at the beginning of the week. And uh, we'll share the slides again with everybody who wasn't here. And if you can fill out the evaluation, that's great. We look forward to seeing many of you next week. We hope you have a great weekend.